Well, hello again, boys and girls. It's Mr. Wassman, and today we are once again looking at how to find the area of figures, but this time we're going beyond just rectangles. So we are in our home links, Unit 4, Lesson 11, so let's dive right in. So the first figure is uh, banking on your newly acquired knowledge of multiplying larger numbers uh, using a number of strategies, either partitioning rectangles or partial products. And then uh, in a couple lessons, you're going to learn another strategy, so just keep that in mind. Find the area. Well, the equation for finding the area of a rectangle, if you recall, is area equals length times width. So if the length of this rectangle is 27 units and the width is 18 units, you would just multiply 27 times 18 to get your answer. And you could set up that problem one of two ways. I'm going to choose partial products. 27 times 18 is built from two tens and seven ones. So I'd multiply two tens times the 10 in 18 and I'd multiply the seven times the 10 in 18. Then I'm gonna do the same again with the eight in the ones place value, 20 times eight and seven times eight. And then I would add all four of those partial products to get my total product. And that total product would be your area. But that's not the uh, focus I want to take today. Today I want to look at problem number three. This area of this figure is not a rectangle. So what do we do here? Okay, so if I'm going to find the area, first I need to have a strategy. Well, the idea here is that this shape has some square corners, so it has some rectangular parts. So the easiest way to approach this is to think of this one figure as two figures glued together. I've got two rectangles, and if I just draw a line right here, I can see the formation of those two rectangles. Okay, So I have a squarish rectangle up here on the top, and then I've got very long skinny rectangular shape over here at the bottom. So the way I would approach this problem is I would first figure out the area of the square and of course squares are a form of rectangle. Uh, it's just a rectangle with equal measured sides. So I would find the area by multiplying 20 inches times 20 inches, 2 times 2 is 4, and so 2 with 1 zero times 2 with 1 zero is going to give me 4 with 2 zero, so 400 inches squared. And then I'm going to take a look at this rectangle, which is 30 by 100, 30 by 100. So I'm going to take 30, and I'm going to multiply it by 100, and it's as easy as just multiplying 3 times 1 with a few extra zeros in tow. 3 times 1 is, of course, 3, followed by 1, 2, 3 zeros, which gives me 3,000. 3,000 inches square. And then you would just add those two uh, amounts together. Okay, so your equation would be as follows. 20 times 20, and I'm going to put those in parentheses, plus 30 times 100. And that would give you your total area. Now let you do the calculations yourself. And that, my friends, is all there is to it. You just look at the shape and try to figure out what smaller shapes can I see within it. I would challenge you to take a look at any room in your home. Um, all rooms 
start out pretty geometric uh, squares or rectangles, but there's usually going to be some sort of cut out or intrusion from another part of another room, whether that be a closet or a doorway or a hallway, uh, a chimney, uh, or something like that. Chances are um, no room in your house is truly rectangular or square. There's got to be some section of the floor that cuts away to some other part. And that's how the folks who put down the floor would approach laying down the tile or the carpet or the uh, hardwood floors or linoleum or whatever you have in your floor uh, in that room, is they would look to see what rectangular shapes can we find, and they either add a section that sticks out or cut away a section that uh, is taken away. Finally, let's take a look at these... Uh, problems that ask you to find the factors, okay? I'm going to go with 062, because 062 is not one that we think of a lot, okay? So what are the different factors or numbers I can multiply together to get to 62? Well, I know that 1 times 62 is going to be a pair, because all numbers have at least one pair of factors, whether they be prime or composite. So 1 times 62. And because... 62 is an even number, that means I know it's divisible by 2. Matter of fact, it ends in 2, so I know that to be true. So 2 times something. Well, I know that 2 times 30 gives me uh, 60, so another group of 2 would give me 62. So that would be 1 extra 2, so that would be 31, so 31 twos. And with that, I'm done, because 31 happens to be a prime number. There are only two ways to get to uh, 31, 1 times 31 or 31 times 1. And since I can't break that number down any farther, I can't, uh, find, I can't divide 31 into 4 groups or to 8 groups or so forth. And because it doesn't end in 5 or 0, I know that 5 and 10 are not factors, and... Uh, 7 will not work either because 7 times 9 is 63, uh, so I'm done. So there's only two pairs of factors, or four factors total in this number. If you have questions about how I came up with the factors of this number, or was able to dissect this funny looking shape into rectangles, or just area questions in general, you need to talk to your math teacher, okay? You might be watching these videos from home uh, as a way to supplement your homework, or maybe you're a virtual student and your teacher assigned you to watch this video to help explain this concept. But uh, when the day is done, you have a real live breathing person, uh, your math teacher, who will be happy to help you if you just take the step to ask. They will happily help you if you ask. They just need to know you need help. So ask questions. That's what they're there for. And if you have no other questions, uh, feel free to log off. And until we meet again, have a good day. Thanks.